a question that I've gotten a few times now during some of my one-on-ones is about using AI and whether or not someone who is learning how to code should actually be using it to help them learn how to code. And I kind of just wanted to make a video that covered all of my thoughts and reasoning why you should use it, when you maybe shouldn't use it, and what kind of benefits you can have from using it. I know that AI right now is like the big boogeyman in the room. Everybody thinks that AI is going to take their jobs. It's going to eliminate the need for junior developers. And there's a lot of fear, uncertainty, and doubt when it comes to AI and programming. And I think that anyone that's actually used it, that's experienced, knows that if it's going to take our jobs, it's not going to do it anytime soon. And while it's really good at some things, it really sucks at others. It's great for basics, but as soon as something gets complicated or you have a serious problem where you need to really think about it and understand what's going on. AI isn't the best at that. And I've used Sonnet 3.5 and I recently tried out the O1 preview of ChatGPT. And while they're great tools, I don't think that they are necessarily going to take anyone's jobs at this point. And I think that there's also a bit of not understanding what a large language model does that scares a lot of newcomers and beginners into thinking that it's a lot smarter than it actually is. And once you have an understanding of what like a large language model is and what it does, it kind of takes some of the mystery out of the AI and it lets you realize that it's actually not really smart. And to give you an idea or high level of like what a large language model is in like simple terms, I've gone ahead and asked ChatGPT, the O1 preview to explain to me at a high level what a large language model is. At a high level, a large language model is a type of artificial intelligence that can understand and generate human-like text. Think of it as a very advanced predictive text system. It is trained on vast amounts of data like books, articles, websites, which allows it to learn the patterns and the structures of human language. When you give a large language model a prompt or ask it a question, it processes that input and predicts what words will likely come next based on everything it has learned. This enables it to generate coherent and contextual approach to responses. Essentially, a large language model tries to continue the conversation in a way that makes sense, much like a human might. That should give you an idea of why it gets so confused and it just keeps trying to repeat the same answer to you when you have a problem that it can't solve. Because it's not smart, it's just really, really, really good autocomplete. And it's just trying to predict what the answer most likely might be based off of all the information that they have been trained on. And once you kind of understand that, it, it takes the mystery out of it and then it makes it feel less scary or intelligent. Now with that in mind, think about it like this. Before when you were learning how to code without AI and you had a question or you had a problem that you were stuck on and you needed to figure it out, you would go out and you would Google it and you would read through Stack Overflow posts and you would read through blog articles and you'd read through Reddit posts and you would try to find the answer anywhere you could. But now what AI and things like ChatGPT and Claude do is that it kind of gives you the answer quickly. I know that many times when you're learning how to code, you feel like you're cheating if you go out and you look for the answer. I remember when I was learning how to code, when I would Google stuff, I felt like I was cheating. I felt like I should have had things memorized. I felt like I should have just known it because I've done so many tutorials and so many different courses. And it's the same problem I've seen a bunch of times, but I just can't remember. So I go out and I Google it and then I feel like, oh man, I should really know this stuff, but I don't. And I can see how using AI now, because that's the latest tool that gives you the answer as quickly as possible, might feel like you're cheating and it might feel wrong in a lot of ways when you're learning how to code. As a programmer, as, as a developer, like your job is to figure out the problem. And if you have tools that can make that happen, you should use them and you should use them to your advantage. And if I was learning how to code right now, like I tell everyone that I talk to who asked this question, I would 100% be using these tools. I don't think that we should limit ourselves or you know, clip our own wings when it comes to our potential with learning because we feel that it might be cheating or we feel like the tool makes it too easy for us. I do have a few points to say on that, but that's what I wanted to get across first. I wanted to say that, yes, you should be using AI, but I do think that you should still struggle. And I do think that 
there's a lot of learning that happens in the struggle. And there's a lot of brain work that goes into looking for the answer and trying to figure the problems out on your own. As someone who is learning how to code, I would use it way different than as someone who's experienced with coding. I still think that there should be some research and, and some brain power that you put into stuff. And I don't think that you should just let AI do all the work for you. I think that's a recipe for disaster when it comes to being a beginner, because as someone who's experienced, and has done that and um, you know I'm not ashamed to admit it but I've gotten to the point where I use Super Maven in my IDE and I've tried out cursor but I didn't really like it too much but I use a lot of that autocomplete stuff and I use a lot of it to kind of eliminate the boilerplate but when it comes to thinking about some you know high level stuff or architectural decisions that I need to make or things that I really need to like sit back and think about like what's the best way to approach this I might still use AI to give me suggestions or point me in the right direction, but I still go and I read documentation and I still go and I try to understand how some of these tools work. And there have been times when I get stuck and AI can't help me and I got to go back to the old fashioned way of like digging through the docs and really figuring out how stuff works. Do your best to not let it just give the answer to you every single time and just feel like, oh, I'm breezing through this. This is so easy because when you take the training wheels off, if they'll ever come off, because AI might be here forever, especially with tools like Cursor AI and other tools that are coming out that are just making programming easier. But when you take the training wheels off, you don't want to feel left like you don't know what you did. Like you don't know how you got something to work and you don't know why it's working. This same thing used to happen to me when I used to copy and paste stuff for Stack Overflow. And when I would just go out and look for the answer and find something that worked and, you know, modify it a little bit, refactor it a tiny bit to fit into my application, whatever the hell I was building at the time. And then, woo, magic, it worked. And then I would come back to it and not know what the hell was going on. I've experienced this myself recently because I'm using AI to help accelerate my productivity and help me build faster. But I have found some times when there's just a lot of stuff that I copy and pasted and I threw into my app, things got working and then a bug happens and I have to go figure it out. Luckily, I have enough experience where I understand how to debug my code. I know how to find the problem. I know how to like narrow things down and I know how to eliminate potential other areas that could be causing a problem. And I understand that because of my years of experience as a developer. When you're a beginner, if you start letting AI do everything for you, it might make you feel like, oh man, I'm learning so quickly, I'm building so fast, but then you'll realize that you're actually not because you're relying too much on that tool to do everything for you. And when that happens, that's that fine line that you have to kind of walk as someone who is learning how to code and using AI to help them. But I do think that it makes a great rubber ducky. And if you don't know what the rubber ducky analogy or, or the meaning behind that is that they tell you to have a rubber ducky at your desk if you're a programmer. And then if you have a problem, you do the rubber ducky technique where you talk to the inanimate object. And as you describe your problem to this inanimate object, then that rubber ducky will listen to you as you work out the problem on your own. And through talking out the problem, you come up with the answer. And I can't tell you how many times I've had a problem where I start prompting Chad GPT and I start like, you know, basically just talking to it as if I was like talking to a senior developer or another developer who I'm trying to explain this problem to. And as I am thinking out the problem and as I'm thinking about all the steps and like what is recreating this problem and why I'm having this problem and when the problem started and what could be causing it, I end up answering my own question. Of course, rubber ducky debugging and all of this stuff kind of comes with experience. And when you're a beginner, it's kind of hard to explain your own problem because you really don't even know how to explain it. You don't know the terminology to put behind it. And you really don't know what's going on a lot of the times when you're first getting started. So again, it's that fine line and it's, it's tricky. It's hard to navigate that as a beginner, but I think it just comes with learning to use the tool, learning the code. And it's just part of the process. Now, I think that this is what modern self-taught programming is going to be like. But I think it's amazing that we have this new tool that can sit there, listen to our problem and give us options and solutions. I'm not a prompt engineer. I probably should watch a few videos on how to better prompt AI. But the truth is when I use AI, and maybe this could be something to help you think about how you can be using AI, I really talk to it or you know, chat with it, type to it as if it was another developer. 
and I write out my problems and I, I, I'll have a conversation with AI. And when I see that it does something that's stupid or does something that could have a side effect that gives me a bug somewhere else, I call it out on it. And then, you know, when it gets really complex, it struggles. But the beauty of being a beginner and using a tool like this is that this tool is really good for basic stuff. And when you're a beginner, most of the stuff that you're going to be doing is actually very, very basic. And you might start coming across like more complex problems eventually. But when you're first learning how to code, most of the stuff is pretty simple, at least to someone who's experienced. Like we'll look at it as like that's really easy stuff only because we're experienced and it's just, you know, kind of like the knowledge complex and it just happens over time when you just understand something better. Things that used to be difficult become trivial and easy for you. And when you're a beginner, those things seem very, very hard, but years of experience make those things easier. But AI is good at that easy stuff. So you definitely should be using it. And I wouldn't go so far as to try to learn how to prompt AI better if you're just learning how to code. I think that the best way to use it as someone who's starting out is to try to talk to it as simply as possible and ask it to explain things to you like a five-year-old. As I've been building out more stuff and as I've been learning Laravel and I've been learning more about full stack development and really diving deep into things that are completely new to me, I've used AI to really help me. Even though I know it's not smart, I'm trying to get the best possible answer out of it and like reassure that I am approaching things correctly and understanding things as I'm supposed to. And it's been really good at that. And I think that that's where when you're learning how to code and if you're using AI, use it as your mentor, use it as your more experienced developer who has the answer for you and can get you the answer right away. Because even though there is a lot of brain power and stuff that goes into going out and finding the answer on your own, and I think that there's a big bit of learning that happens there, there's usually a rule of like, spend about 20 minutes spinning your wheels on something, spend a bit of time trying to figure it out on your own before you ask me for help. And that's usually like the go-to rule. That's what I was told when I was a junior dev from my senior developer. It's always like, did you Google that before you asked me? And I think that now we're just getting to a point where it's like, did you ask ChatGPT before you asked me? And being able to find the answer when you're stuck it's such a relief. We're at a point now where you can find the specific answer for the exact problem that you're having without having to just go through all of the internet on your own to try to find it. When you're on the third page of Google and you can't find it, if you're an experienced developer, you know that you've been there before and you know how frustrating that is. And I will say that there are times when it feels like, you know, ChatGPT isn't giving me the best answer. And then, you know, we resort to having to go reach out to colleagues or we resort to having to actually go ask people on the internet. But that's starting to become a thing of the past. As these things get smarter, they get trained on more information, they get better at what they do. There's a lot of updates recently that they're trying to make code generation better, which means that it just gives us the answer better and faster and helps us learn faster and become better. I truly believe that. And I think that it will make the bridge between tutorial hell and learning to do things on your own much smaller. And honestly, I think that AI and tools like ChatGPT and Claude will eliminate tutorial hell because I think what happens in tutorial hell is that you learn enough of the basics. You don't really know the stuff, but you've consumed enough content and you've followed along with enough tutorials where you feel like, all right, I kind of understand this stuff, but I don't know where to start. These tools, these large language models are the tools that will help you get started. And I do believe that they'll probably really help you get out of tutorial hell. So should you be using it from the very start? Yes. Should you get a basic understanding of things like HTML, CSS, and JavaScript? I'm going to talk about web development because that's what I do and that's what I mostly talk about. Yes, I think that you should still follow along with some tutorials. I think that you should still learn some courses. I think that you should read some books and I think that you should consume some content and you know, follow along with project-based learning because those things will help you understand a lot of basic things that will prepare you to start using tools like this. And I don't think that there's an exact moment in time when you should start. I think that the sooner the better, but if you absolutely have zero clue of how to do anything and you don't know anything at all about web development, you could still use it. <laughs> Honestly, you could still ask it like, hey, where do I start? 
what what should I learn first? What do I need to know before I start doing this? What do I need to know before I start doing that? How much of this should I know to do this? I truly believe that it'll help you become a better developer faster and it'll help you learn quicker. And use these tools. They're not going anywhere. They're here for the long run. The sooner you use them, the better you will be at using them and the better you will be at building and the quicker you will get to where you want to be. Ultimately, with your goals as a software developer, these tools are here to stay and they're just something that you should put in your arsenal. Nobody knows what the future might hold when it comes to these tools and our livelihood as developers, but while it's here and I can use it, I'm gonna take advantage of it as much as I can and I'm gonna use it to make me better and help me build faster and learn faster, and you should too. All right, with all that said, I know this was a bit of a long-winded video talking about whether or not you should use these tools, and I feel that it could have all been summed up by just saying, yeah, go use them, but I just kind of wanted to put some of my thoughts and opinions behind it for anyone who's interested in kind of knowing what I think about it, and hopefully that that helps you make the decision and understand how or when or why you should use some of these tools as a beginner and someone who's just learning how to code as a self-taught developer. We're not alone anymore. We're all going to be taught by chat GPT. You know, when I was learning how to code, it was all Google and YouTube. And now it's just AI and large language models that are teaching us. All right. With all that said, I hope this video was helpful. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.